Hey, what's up, guys? This is Afani Cthulhu here. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to do uh, the speedrun tricks for Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation 1. Uh, I'm gonna be telling you uh, the way that I do them, the way that I've learned them. Uh, there is other ways uh, to do all these tricks. Uh, if one of these methods that I show you doesn't work for you, then uh, there's uh, research you can do and find these other methods and maybe one of those will work for you. Uh, and real quick, I will say that uh, I myself learned all these tricks from a very in-depth tutorial on how to speedrun this game by Turbo Dog. Uh, you can find that on YouTube. Uh, if you want to really get down to like pretty much everything about speedrunning this game, we're just going to talk about the tricks. We're not really going to talk about individual rooms or anything. So, that is what we're going to do today. Uh, the first thing, uh, if you're going to speedrun this game, you'd, you'd need to have a clear file. You need to have a clear file. Uh, otherwise, you will not be able to skip cutscenes. And also, uh, there will not be a duplicator in the library, which is very important. Uh, for this speedrun. So once you've beaten the game, uh, you have a clear file. Then your next playthrough, you can, uh, you know, get yourself speedrun. Uh, now we're gonna do the little intro because it is important, and uh, you will know why in just a second. Uh, I will tell you. Start off as Richter here. Run up here. And you can uh, press down and up and then X or A, whatever button, you know, controller you got. And you can jump through this uh, wall here without hitting the button and bringing the, the uh, staircase down. So just do that, grab that big heart. Uh, grab this little heart and grab this big heart now that puts us at 41 hearts That's important. You need to make sure you get over 40 hearts. So we got 41 and In this battle versus Dracula. We need to use every single heart that we have so That those two things are very important get over 40 hearts and Use every heart that you have Uh, it's gonna be a slow fight here. We didn't get a damage stack and also for some reason I threw One more than I normally throw off screen So, But you see there we, we ended with zero hearts and we also uh, we had 42 hearts when we started that battle What that is going to do is since we had the 42 hearts uh, that is going to give us the neutron bomb um, In our inventory here as Alucard and since we used them all we went we got all the way down to zero hearts that is going to give us a heart refresh uh so we'll check our inventory uh as we uh get up here and i'll show you guys so a heart refresh uh for using all the hearts that we had and we got a neutron bomb for having over 40 uh hearts in that battle and we want both of these items uh, here again for the beginning the first trick in the game the death skip uh, The you, you know some people don't use the neutron bomb and whatnot <coughs> Excuse me. I've been I've been a little sick the last few days. I'm getting over it and you know coughing it out, but Could have some uh, random coughs here and there. So I apologize, but but uh, Here again, I'm showing you the methods that I know and the methods that I use uh, but like I said, there are multiple ways you can do these. So maybe you've seen someone do it differently, or maybe this method doesn't work well for you. So you need something else. Uh, but you can find that information elsewhere. But yeah, so we got our heart refresh and our neutron bomb, so we're good to go. And just real quick, uh, we are shield dashing. Which is the main movement skill in the in the speed run early on, and you know, throughout 
pretty much half of it. Uh, all you do is alternate between, uh, for me it's Y and B on the controller, which is shield uh, and dash. This is what a regular dash looks like. It's like as fast as you can regularly dash. What you're doing is when you throw up the shield, it cancels the animation of the dash. So then you can uh, just, uh, you know, repeat it back and forth. So that's how we're going to be moving about. Just kill. Kill. After the second warg, the lights come on and zombies start to spawn. Now it's important that you kill at least two zombies and no more than three zombies. The reason that is important is because we need to level up at a certain time. Uh, so kill at least two and no more than three. So there's three wargs in this room. One. Two. Well, actually, I must have killed too many zombies, and that's fine, because I have a safe state. So if you if you level up on the second one there, uh, you've killed too many. We need to level up on the third warg, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to move over to our safe state here, uh, which is set up right. All right, so what I did... What I did was uh, jump over that warg, uh, and then I waited for him to growl at me, and I dragged him over a little bit by doing, doing two back dashes like that. And now he is over here. Uh, I hit this block, and I got the turkey out of there. And then you just stand against the block uh, like this. Then you go, and you equip the neutron bomb. Uh, and now you're ready to do your first trick. And you know, some of this information might be coming at you quickly, but it is a video. So if you, if you, you know, you didn't grasp it, you know, just, just go back a little bit, listen again, you know, do it, do it again, work with it, make you some save states, uh, you know, and, and just practice, you know, it's going to take a while to learn these tricks. You know, it took me, I think the first day that I, that I did this on stream and, um, and that I learned this, it took me probably five, six, seven hours, somewhere in there to get it all kind of uh good to where i felt like i could at least start doing some real practice and stuff <coughs> so in, in the grand scheme of things it's not a very long time for you to learn a game and really if you got some you know some good uh tricking skills uh it's not going to take you too long um to get it so but all right so we're standing against the block we've, we've broken the block we've gotten the turkey out and now we're as far right as we can be. We put the neutron bomb on. And now we're ready to uh, do the trick. Now the idea here is to press select to buffer uh, Alucard's movement. And what we're looking for is we're looking for a specific cape animation. Now I happened to get it on the very first one this time. So that, that's pretty cool. But what we want is... Uh, there's that white line on Alucard's cape on the far left. <coughs> Excuse me, let me drink some water real quick. <coughs> uh, but um, you see that very, the very far left of Alucard's cape right now, there's that white vertical line. What you want is for that white line to be on the left side of the black line that separates the blocks at the bottom. Okay? We want that white line to be on the left side of the black line that separates the two blocks at the bottom. So let's look at some bad, bad examples. This is too early. Uh, the, cape, the white line is to the right of the black line. And this is too late. We don't even have the white line anymore. So you have to you have to get it just right, uh, and once you do, you are set up for the uh, the death skip. So too far, just right. You see that? That is good to go. Now, once you got the right setup, and once you're in the right position here, what you want to do is you want to buff a neutron bomb. Go ahead and holding B. 
you want to hold left on the controller and then we're going to press select and he is going to go into the neutron bomb uh, right away just like that so we got our setup buff the b the, the neutron bomb for me is the b button and uh hold left and then we're gonna press select all right now once we're in the level up i'm gonna tell you before we do it because it all happens kind of fast once we are in the level up uh with the warg and all that then we are gonna uh buff a back dash uh by holding y and once he back dashes uh into the block you're gonna turn around hold right for a second and make sure alucard runs for a second what that does is it allows the uh, the sub pixels to align, and then we're gonna take a full jump forward, and then just run through the screen. So let's just do it all in uh, succession here. Buff a B uh, and a left. Map. Buff a back dash. Hold right. Full jump, and you're through. That's how you do the death skip uh, using the neutron bomb method. Let's try it again. Let's go through and just uh, try to do it. So we're looking for that animation. Didn't get it, didn't get it. It got it. Hold neutron bomb and left. Back dash. Uh, turn around. Full jump. And we're through. That is the uh, death skip. That's how you do it. One thing to note. Um, If you go up here, and you let's say you, you did the death skip, and you fall in this hole, that is a soft lock. That it, you can't get out of that. That's a reset. That is a reset. So make you want to make sure you jump over this, and you never want to fall in here. <laughs> it's not good. It is again. I'll show it to you one more time real quick. We'll move on. That's a, that's too short. That is the right animation. It's pretty close to the black line. Sometimes if you're right on top of the black line, it won't work. Uh, but you know, that's that's that, that might work. So let's try it out. There we go, and we're through. Now we'll just make our way on up. Woo. They almost did it myself. Boom, 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 boom. Gotta get the cube. Very important. Uh, if you don't, candles do not turn into items. You just hit a candle and it's nothing. <laughs> so you definitely want to get the cube. And I am I am live on Twitch right now, uh, so for anybody just coming in, I will say while we're just kind of getting to the next area, I am making a uh, YouTube tutorial for all the tricks, uh, teaching you guys how to do the method, uh, you know, of all these uh, tricks the way that I do them, the way I've learned them. So that is what we're going over right now. And that is why we kind of have like the little poverty overlay going too. But I wanted the controller to be a decent size and the game to be a decent size. So, so we're just making our way to Slogger and Gaibon. I'm not gonna go into like how to get quick kills with them or anything like that. We're just gonna go over the tricks. And uh, if we do it like this, you guys can uh, see the route that I'm gonna take. I am not actually good at getting this quick kill, so I probably won't. Or I will. Okay. That was actually it. <laughs> it's 
so our first real order of business, uh, the main thing we're doing here is we are going to get the soul of the werewolf. That is our first uh, task at hand. That is our uh, goal right now, where, where we are heading to, which is on the outer wall, uh, where you turn the elevator on and then you, it is right at the top of the elevator. Uh, while you are on your way, uh, we'll know, I, w I will uh, say one thing to be aware of is learn where big hearts are in uh, these candles because you're going to need them. We're going to be picking up the stopwatch and uh, one use of the stopwatch costs 20 hearts. So we are definitely going to be uh, needing some uh, hearts. Here again, if you if you could if you didn't have a clear file, you would have to listen to Maria talk, and uh, that would be no good. All right, so the stopwatch is right here. You want to pick this up. The reason being you want the stopwatch is, you know, obviously it helps you in some rooms. But the reason you want it this early is because the first, the, uh, well, the second boss we fight uh, coming up next is the doppelganger fight and doppelganger is actually the only boss in the game that actually freezes uh, completely when you uh, use the stopwatch so it is gonna make that fight a real joke uh, I think other than that the lesser demon we will fight him later on uh, it slows the lesser demon down but every other boss I don't even think it does anything to it really so big heart here there is a big heart there but a little out of the way I, w I would say only get that early on until you get used to uh, the route and where other big hearts are so just uh, you can see the controller I am just holding up and I am tapping uh, X so as soon as he becomes available, he is going to get frozen. And then it takes three swings with the Alucard Sword and he is out. Make your way on up here. And the more you play it and the more runs you do, you'll notice that you'll be leveling up on the same like enemies every time. You'll get used to uh, where you're going to level up at. And actually, if you go for really low times uh, in this game, uh, you know, those really top guys, uh, where they level up, they, they have that managed very, very tightly. If they level up on the wrong guys somewhere, they, they know their timing's off and stuff. So we got the wolf. Oh, and real quick, the reason why I went in that door and came back out like that, because otherwise uh, the elevator, even though we turned it on, it would not be at the top yet. And you would have to sit here and wait for it to come all the way from the bottom to the top. So it's actually quicker to go in there, come back out, and then the door to the wolf is already open. And you can go ahead and ride the elevator down. Now we're gonna do a uh, little bit of sequence breaking here uh, because normally you cannot get up here until you get double jump uh, which is how it's meant to be but what we do is uh, we use a wolf jump uh, in the sc screen transition and it allows us to get up there 
So uh, basically what you want to do is you want to press forward forward to start running with the wolf. You want to uh, jump like right before you get uh, to the screen. And then as you're in the transition, you want to uh, switch from left to right on the D-pad. So forward forward jump and then just turn, turn right. It's pretty easy. Pretty easy. Forward forward jump. Pretty easy. Definitely need that garnet. We'll be talking about that later. Uh, because the wolf jump is pretty, pretty large, you know. And then just turn around. Alright, so we got that. We're going to... We're going to go to... Uh, back to the clock room. This is where we are heading now to do our next sequence break. This room right here is a good room to uh, work on your back dashing. And uh, our shield dashing rather. Oh, pentagram run. No. <laughs> but um, the main thing when you're starting out is you want to uh, keep the screen moving. Uh, you don't have to worry about going too fast, you know, just make sure the screen is moving and you don't see skips and stuff. You know, that's when I know I'm, I'm doing good or bad that day. If I see the the skip uh, in the screen, like, you know. So, it's a good room for it back there. I, I've actually been missing that heart myself, so that's why I went back and got it. <coughs> Sorry chat and anybody watching the video, I apologize. Like I said, we're just making our way back, but we're also picking up hearts along the way, big hearts. Don't worry about small hearts, it's too too little. Too little. Our time is more important than that. Alright, so here we come up to the clock room. Uh, it might close on me. I don't know if we have time to explain it and all that, but um, Okay, so normally you don't get dive kick, which is uh, you know when you jump in the air and press down and jump uh, Alucard does like a little dive kick. You wouldn't get that until you get double jump But for some reason you do get it if you had the werewolf You just have to jump turn into the werewolf turn back into Alucard and you have dive kick and you can dive kick off that candle Let's do that again. Uh, oops. Well, it closed on me, so we'll just wait. We'll just have a minute to wait. I'll have some water and, uh, you know, we'll just uh, kick it. We'll just kick it. Yeah, the, the clock opens, um, or the thing opens on even minutes on in-game timer, and it closes on odd minutes on in-game timer. So... You know, it's pretty given it could happen especially doing something like this so just give me a second and uh you know as we wait enjoy that uh ticking sound effect There we go. All right, so. You wanna be kinda of on the right hand side of this or you're gonna miss it, so. Once you get up here like this, jump, wolf, back, dive kick. Boom, easy. Easy peasy, that's like the easiest trick to do. Now we are making our way to the Coliseum uh, where you fight Minotaur, and uh, werewolf X. And it's just to the left over here. To the left.
My favorite track in the game. Just a huge uh, guitar fan, and I just can't get over this clean jazz guitar riff. Right. <laughs> Fight's easy. Back dash twice. Easy. Also, uh, if you want to practice your back dashing, uh, you can use something like this. I, I use this a lot. Um, just somewhere where he doesn't actually move. Now, the only problem is, is you're not getting to see the screen move, so you don't know if you're hitting it solidly or not. But at least you you can like practice, you know, going back and forth. And then you take it into one of the bigger rooms and, uh, you know, you can practice uh, actually seeing if the screen is moving uh, smoothly or, or if it's skipping and stalling. All right, so we got the mist. We want to run back over this way. And we want to get the shield rod. That's pretty important for, uh, you know, the, toward the end there. Now in this room, I will say that the main, the, what you really want to do is come in here and cast Soul Steel. Uh, I have a very big problem casting Soul Steel on emulator, which is what I'm using. So uh, I'm just gonna try to get through the quickest and best way I can. But yeah, if you can run in here and do Soul Steel, you are good to go. I like to use a uh, watch. I was trying to damage boost. Sometimes I can do it really good, sometimes I cannot. Once you get the shield rod, library card, we are heading to the library. <coughs> Alright, so one thing to note is the library card throws you right in front of the librarian. Uh, if you walk into this room right now, your run is over. Your run is dead. Do not go in there at all until you are ready to go in there later on when we, uh, you know, are setting up this trick we'll talk about in just a little bit here. But do not go in there. We need, we need that first uh, encounter where Alucard talks to the librarian. Uh, we need that for, for something later. So if you go in there and you talk to the librarian and you have that little cutscene, uh, you can't use it later on, so it's, it's dead for you. That trick is dead and that trick is very important. So here is a sequence break. Uh, it's a little tricky. I could miss it a couple times. <coughs> <coughs> because <coughs> these books here definitely don't like to help you out uh, but what we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run and do that uh, the wolf jump and turn just like we did for the garnet and uh, we're gonna hang in the air for just a moment before we switch into Alucard then we're gonna switch to Alucard and dive kick off of the book and it's gonna boost us up over the ledge so that is the idea here let's see if we can pull it off That's gonna be a little short, so I didn't even didn't even want to transform because I knew like if you're not far enough left, um, you're just not gonna get it. Now you can, you can. There's something you can do, uh, which would be missed, and then that'll take you up a little higher. So let's try. To, you gotta get. Gotta get the books to be cooperative with you, and they really don't like to be. There we go. So it's the same trick. Uh, it's the same trick essentially with the wolf jump that we did for the garnet. You you have to do it a few times to get the feel for it. We want to run right about here. You want to jump, wait, dive kick, and then 
you get it right, you'll boost off the book like we did up and over. So it is a little tricky. And, you know, I, I usually jump when I reach the, the first brown pillar there in the background. So you have where I'm standing, there's like the gray pit. Here, let me kill these books real quick. Let us, let us explain stuff, please. Uh, see the big pillar in the background, and there's like the two brown sides. Usually when I get right here, to this brown side is where I, j I start my jump and turn around. Just how it is sometimes, you yeah. know? I could admit, see, if you do something like that, that's where you could miss that and, and do it. Why have I used all my stopwatches? <laughs> Doesn't matter, you know, it's not the important part we're, we're going to go over, so, but that, we, if we were running, that would really suck. Like that. See, I was a little short, so I used the mist to kind of make that little extra bit of room up and get up and over there. We won't have a watch for the lesser demon, but really you want it for that room back there because that is a bad room to get through quickly without a stop watch. Normally I do have a stop watch used for a lesser demon, which we did in there, but, but basically all we're doing here is we are getting the bat that is the main thing. Uh, that is why we go get missed, you know, so we can get through there and get the bat. And then we are just heading back out. Uh, you won't ever need any of these, by the way. If you're taking a bunch of damage that you don't normally take, um, maybe, you know, you might pick one up just to feel safe, but really you don't, you know, you don't, you don't need it. Now we're just going to make our way over here. Want to get the fairy card. That is important. We're about to use it in just a moment. Now we've actually been playing for quite a while on stream <clears throat> already, so my thumb is a little dead for shield dashing. My shield dashing is not at its best right now. But okay, so we are back at the librarian's door. We have, you know, turn around, face the other way. You don't have to, you could just stand here like this, you know, I, I think this is the easiest way, you know, just, just face the other way and backdash when we need to. So face the other way. You want to make sure Alucard comes to a complete stop. Like if you're running up here and you turn like this and then you put on the fairy card, uh, that's not good because the fairy is probably not going to talk and then talk then. And what we need, what we need is for her to, uh, play an audio file and speak, you know? So once you come to a complete stop, turn around, turn on the fairy card. Now what we're going to do is once the, we hear the fairy talk, we're going to backdash into the room and press start twice to uh, go straight through the little cutscene with the librarian. But since her audio file is going on and his little cutscene audio file is happening, something happens within the game and it breaks the menu for the librarian. And that is what we're trying to do. So, backdash, as soon as we hear her talking, press start twice. It's really easy. Your what? Yeah, boom. Good. 
Okay, so now we have broken the menu. And what we can do is we can press start and go to our menu while we are inside the librarian's menu. Normally you can't go to your menu while you're in the librarian's menu. But since we did the little trick there, now we can. You know, so. I'm interested in So what that allows us to do is uh, we're gonna we're gonna manipulate and use this garnet that we got earlier. That's why it's important. Normally you don't have the onyx. It's just weird that we do this time. But uh, what we want to do is we want to go in to sell gems. I'm interested in this. Uh, highlight, you know, go over the garnet. Then you want to go in your menu and equip the garnet. Once you have it equipped, we want to sell it then. <laughs> Thank you. Go out of the, the sell menu, go back into the sell I'm menu. Interested in this. And what you have just done is called an underflow glitch. Uh, the game thinks it messed up and, 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 you know, now it's trying to fix itself. So what it did, what it, it gave us the maximum number of garnets that we can possibly have. So now we can just sell, you know, like a billion and get, what we want is at least 530 or 40,000. You know, you could keep going for a very long time if you wanted to though, it doesn't matter, but really all you need is 500 and, you know, about 40,000 or whatever. <laughs> Now we're gonna go. Now that we have all that money, we're gonna buy this. a mana prism, <laughs> Thank you. a buffalo star, Thank you. and a duplicator, which costs five hundred thousand. So that that's the main reason, you know, we need all that money. <laughs> Thank you. Farewell for now. All right, so now we're just going back over. And uh, now that we have like the setup with, uh, you know, we got our duplicator, we got uh, mana prisms, which means now we can have infinite mana refill. And we have the Buffalo Star, which is really strong DPS. Uh, we're essentially going straight to the end of the game here, as, you know, as best we can. <laughs> well, I was gonna get, I was gonna go get an uncurse, but I can't quite get it, so we'll just bat on out of here. Bat on out. Uh, when you're cursed, you can't use your shield, so I couldn't shield dash or my weapon. So, and essentially, once you get the Buffalo Star, uh, you do want to set it up like this. Mana Prism in, in the left hand and uh, Buffalo Star in the right. Uh, reason being is because you can shield dash with the Buffalo Star. So. But now where we are heading we are just going straight over to where you would fight Richter at <coughs> and you may be wondering you know I do have chat open guys I just you know <laughs> but um you may be wondering why uh why do you need the duplicator uh, what the duplicator does is it duplicates use items so items that are normally a uh, one-time use uh and then they are gone uh as long as you have the duplicator on uh you can uh just sit there and use that item over and over and over and over again so like for instance we could use potions you know an infinite amount of potions as long as we had the duplicator equipped same thing with the pentagram or the turkey or the shield potion uh, any any item that is a use item uh, becomes infinite as long as you have the duplicator on so that's why I can sit here and throw a billion buffalo stars even though I bought one you know so 
And yes, for, for meme purposes, yes, you can just sit here and throw turkeys. Or do soul steal by accident when you tell everybody you can't really do it. But yeah. One thing to note about having the mana prism on is when you use the mana prism uh, just for like a second, maybe a second and a half, you get iframes from it. Uh, so if you get in a little bit of trouble and you think you're about to get hit, you can use the mana prism and uh, give yourself some iframes. So like I said, I'm not really going into each room discussing what's going on, but I did get hit here. So I'm just gonna just use a backup method, which is to use my heart refresh to get some, uh, you know, hearts back, and then I'm just gonna stop watch uh, everybody <coughs> and fly through here. There is something funny about, about this wall. wall. Uh, real quick, I will tell you about bat movement. Uh, your main movement with the bat is the wing smash. This right here. But, uh, normally you can't change directions with the wing smash like that. You know, you're either gonna bonk something or just run out uh, of space. And then he's gonna transform. Uh, what we do is called the mist bat. Uh, is what it uh, is referred to as. Essentially, you turn into the mist and turn right back into the bat. So like L1, R1 in uh, quick succession, and that allows you to turn, you know, and do what you want. So like I said, we're just making our way to uh, where Richter is. A little short that's all right we can save that so this is uh the richter skip there is several methods of doing this but uh i when i first started learning uh i did learn a different method and i thought it was pretty inefficient uh this method is is okay uh i, th I feel it's the best i've ever uh, messed with so uh let's get into it uh the first thing you want to do is you want to break the block but you do not want to hit the switch uh, so you just want to throw one buffalo star. Break the block, but do not hit the switch. Alright, now we want to turn to the wolf. And now we need to get in position. And the positioning we want is when the wolf has both of his front paws on the top level of the, the walkway here. So you see now he does not, does not. He's got one up there. Now he's got both on the top. You see how you can see both of his feet uh, on the top now? Let's get back into position again. Nope, 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 yep. All right, so once you get in position like this, uh, we want to do this weird little, this weird little hop thing. You know, it's like not a full hop like it's supposed to be. It's like, it's kind of like, if you were trying to do the jump, just jump normally, uh, you would think you messed up, but you did, you didn't do it right. But it's what we need to happen here. So the way you do that is you press forward and then you press forward plus A uh, pretty quickly. So it's like forward, forward plus A. It's kind of like a Mortal Kombat move in a way. You know, so forward, forward plus A. Uh, that, you know, you'll know when you get it. I'll show you when you, when you know you got it. Uh, we almost got it there. I saw it wanting to do it, but it unbroke itself. If you got a lot of momentum like that, you've already missed it. <laughs> there we go again. We did it. Let's get the candle out of the way. Ooh, I need that watch though. And 
I mean, it wants to do it for me. It's not, we've done it like, we've almost done it like three times already. It's just not quite doing it. Sometimes I run up here and I do it on the first try, second try maybe. But then sometimes it really just wants to be aggravating, so. I'm gonna use a mana prism real quick. You know, you'll get used to it. It'll take you some time to uh, get this, but it feels really cool when you do it. You know, it feels really good. And you, you know, you show your friends and they're like, what the hell, man? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it is pretty cool. All right, so you can see the sky above us right here. That means uh, normally that's not there. Normally it's like the wall or something. You've broken the, the castle there you know, and you can see the sky. That means you've done it right. If you see the sky right there, you're good to go, okay? But before we go forward, let's go back and do it again. Uh, so get in position, forward, forward. That's a little too weak. We need like in between those two. Now see, we've broken the castle again. We can see the sky, all right? Now once you're in this position, all you need to do is wing smash over, hit the wall and press start. That's it. You will leave Richter kneeling for eternity. Now we are on into the second castle. Now the second castle here, is really just getting to the last trick in the game. Uh, it's pretty dangerous because you're very weak compared to these enemies. So you will have to, uh, you know, get used to going through here and uh, hopefully not dying. We've actually lost, uh, I think we lost two runs tonight to deaths over here in the inverted castle. At least one, I know for sure, but I think it was two. right there I knew that tombstone was about to hit me <laughs> use my mana prism and jump right through me use them eye frames like I said we're just making our way over we gotta kill Medusa Crouch and throw some buffalo stars at her. She's gone. Now, when I come to a screen transition like that, and I do the miss bat. It's because when you go through transitions of screens or you level up, uh, it throws off the timing of when you would do the wing smash and you're probably just not gonna be able to chain it. So what I've just started doing is just wing smashing instead or um, miss batting instead. That way I can just go ahead and uh, you know, fix it. All right, well this room, this room's a real pain in the butt. And we're not gonna get all into it. But I will say, if you mess up, uh, you know, do just do what I did. And, uh... Stopwatch everything. Kinda, you know, get through it best way you can. When you, when you go for, like, uh, you know, uh, your first PB, probably, that room is probably going to be a room where you're going to be able to save time at on your second one because that room is just really tough to uh, hit right and to uh, get through it very smoothly. Now we are in the inverted coliseum and uh, it is a scary place because it, you know a lot of stuff in here can kill you very quickly. Now, do not 
do not uh, take you know like all these things I'm doing in these individual rooms and uh, try to learn that because some of these things I'm doing just to be safe and making sure I don't mess up as we go through the tutorial here uh, these are not like actually how I try to go through some of these rooms and stuff uh, like I said in the beginning, you know, we're not really going through that. We're just, I just wanted to show everybody the tricks. You know, I get uh, asked often, like, how do, how do you do that death skip there? Or how did you just do that? You know, how are you in the inverted castle? You know, stuff like that. So, and also, you know, making this for people uh, that I know come around my chat. And, uh, you know, they said maybe they, they're interested in getting started speedrunning this game. And uh, this will definitely help uh, anybody out with that. You know, work your way on over to where I'm heading. Which is right up here. Alright, so we are at the last trick in the speedrun, and it is the most uh, intricate and, you know, just the most aggravating one to do. Uh, <clears throat> this is the reason, the main reason why we needed that heart refresh in the very, very beginning uh, from the Richter scene. Uh, this is why we needed the heart refresh, but, you know, it also did help along the way to... <clears throat> help us get hearts and to use the stopwatch when we ran out. Do you want to equip your heart refresh? Uh, and then we need to get into position. Now the positioning is, is, is you know, kind of tough to get. Uh, let me just throw on a sword real quick. Shield rod's fine. Uh, the screen moves right about where the uh the shield rod uh reaches its maximum point right now so what we want to do is is we want to use our heart refresh to stop the screen from moving even though we moved into that position and what that is going to do is going to confuse the game and once we go back through this door over here to the left the game is going to throw us somewhere uh, that we're not supposed to be because it's confused Because it thought it should have moved and it didn't get to move but now it thinks you know It's just a way off. So it throws us somewhere. We shouldn't be so Essentially what we're gonna do is just walk up here stop the screen from moving uh, With the heart refresh we're gonna do two back dashes turn around and jump and go so now let's try to get actually get in position for that. So did you see the screen move just then? That means I went too far and I knew I went too far. So I didn't even cast heart refresh. Uh, if you see that, so like if you come up here and you're trying to get in position and you see the screen move like that, you've scrolled the screen and that is bad because we're trying to prevent that. Uh, so you just want to kind of just edge your way up and the screen did move so this will probably not work so back dash twice and jump yep see didn't do it kind of like right here where you want to kind of aim for you can see there's that tiny crack in the block uh, next to Alucard's left foot from our perspective it's actually his left foot from his is really his right but we're going to talk about from our perspective. So that's his left foot we're talking about. Um, you know, he's he's got a good foot space. Hey, <laughs> he's posing because we're taking too long. But uh, you got about one foot length of uh, space in between that crack in the block and his left foot. So, uh, you, you know, you're probably pretty good to try for the trick. Um, when you get the trick... <clears throat> Let's just get into the position. Uh, it should look like this. Uh, and you won't have scrolled the screen. So if you see this, where his feet, uh, you know, his toe on the right foot lines up right with that line. And then the beginning of his left foot 
is right there at the other line uh, that is a good positioning that's when you know you know you really want to backdash and, and do it you know go for it so if you end up you know if you end up not looking like that you, you look something like this or you know like that it's really not even worth you trying now it can work with that second one I've done it you know but it, you really have no clue if it's going to or not so if you're going for a time and you mess it up I would say just not even go for it and just kind of re reposition uh, if also if you do mess it up you do not have to like you know come in here and re, you know re restart from a new screen or nothing you, you can miss it right here go back and just set it up right here as long as you're as long as you're going back beyond the point where the screen scrolls then you're good you don't have to reset the room let's try and, and do it that was too early I, I hit the heart refresh too early it looks okay I might be a half a pixel too short though but let's try it out there we go. Now, as soon as you get it, and, and once you see the screen turn black, you want to be pressing bat transformation. Because if you don't, you're just going to fall through and land on that golden knight, and he's probably going to kill you. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my save state here, and we'll, we'll try it again. So just, you know, start edging your way up, get in position, heart refresh, back dash, back dash, turn, go, bat. Now, this is the second part of the Relic Skip, and lately, uh, I have switched the uh, emulator, so I've been having trouble with the timing of this myself. But once we're in this position, what we need to do is we need to do five wing smashes in a row. Don't do four, don't do six, we need to do five. Uh, if you do four, you're gonna get this weird kind of like glitchy looking thing, and you're gonna have to like use the mist to get out of the wall. Uh, and if you do six, um, I think it just pushes you down and out. I'm not too sure, but you need to do five. So try and do it. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go for it, but. I still wouldn't suggest you guys would with that animation. It might not work. You know, I got it though. Four, five, right there. And then you just jump out. That's all you gotta do. Just keep tapping jump and jump out. Go back to that. One, two, three, four, five. Jump out. That is all the tricks in the game. Uh, well, I'll just come up here and we'll finish it off and show you what to do. It's pretty easy, but that is, that is all, you know, let's go through every trick that you guys uh, would need to know how to do uh, if you do want to speed run this game. Uh, at least the any percent category. Uh, if you do all bosses, there are some harder tricks to do uh, for sure, but uh, this is any percent uh, right here. What I do is I like to use a mana prism before I go to the menu. Then I put on the shield rod and the Alucard shield. When I come out, I will cast it. Uh, in the meantime, the mana prism hasn't quite finished hitting yet. So basically, we're getting an Alucard shield uh, cast for free. So. Cause it's gonna re it's gonna refill my mana after I cast it. And, you know, the rest is history, you know. Just hold, hold B. <laughs> Jump, turn. Like, easy peasy. And, of course, you got Dracula. Good old Dracula. Behold my 
And actually, during this part of the game, Go back I'm, gonna, I'm gonna mute it since Trouble we're just gonna talk a little bit. Um, during these two fights, uh, is the only time that I actually do turn my hand uh, to a different positioning. Uh, I turn my wrist, and you know, I, I get kind of that 45 degree angle facing the left, and I take my uh, middle finger and I place it on B, and I take my index finger and I place it on A. So I'm just holding the shield out with my middle finger, hold, uh, constantly holding it down. I am just jumping with uh, the index, just tapping A. Let's see, this is the only time that I personally do switch my uh, hand positioning. Uh, but some people do it the whole time with their shield dashing and everything. So, but uh, you know, like I said, we didn't we didn't go over a lot of things that will help you get your times down uh, in the beginning. But what I did want to go through was uh, each little trick, and which is the death skip. Um, you know, the the few sequence breaking uh, easy little tricks as far as where he's getting the garnet uh, and uh, getting up into the clock tower early, or not the clock tower, but through the clock room early and then going over and uh we do the librarian uh the sh the shop glitch that allows us to get all the money for the duplicator then you go do the richter skip um and then lastly the relic skip so uh that that's it i mean that's there's not that many tricks uh that you need to learn uh, as far as big tricks to learn uh, to get started so what what really is going to bring your time down is uh not only hitting the tricks efficiently once you learn them but then also also like the movement in each room uh and how efficient you are with with that that is really what's going to bring your times down so don't you know don't worry too much right now in the beginning about you know oh well i got hit once i need to reset or this and that just I would say just go through do runs you know no reset runs you know only reset if you miss uh mess up like the death skip which is uh you know instant reset or uh if for some reason you messed up the shop glitch that's a reset and if for some reason you initiated the cutscene with Richter instead of actually skipping that and that would be a reset uh otherwise i would say don't reset you know fail the tricks um and do them you know failing is okay because you're just learning you know so you're not going to get up here and do them on the first try or you know whatever you're going to fall and you're going to get you know get hit by things and stuff but it's okay because you got to learn how to do it and you're not going to learn how to do it if you just keep resetting the game and going back to the death skip, which you can do because, you know, if you've gotten past that point, you know, you, you've gotten to the relic skip, you, you're probably good on the death skip. Like, that's going to be really easy once you once you get that down. So don't don't get hung up on, on one trick and, and, you know, feel like you need to reset. And then you keep doing the same tricks that you already know. But you're not practicing that one you don't know. You know, so what I would suggest is to uh, make you some save states at each of them. Um, and then just go through, uh, you know, spend you some time practicing. And then just start doing, you know, little runs of it. And, and don't worry about if you get a 40 minute time or a 30 minute time or whatever. Just, just do a run and, and do some practice. And, uh, you know, then eventually you'll, you'll get better at the movement and uh, getting through each room. And uh, hitting the tricks on the first try, and uh, it's 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 a really fun game to speed run. It really is. Uh, it's actually my favorite game of all time. Uh, and I initially, when I became a speed runner, uh, I said I would not touch this game because I did not want to ruin it, so to say, for myself. You know, I I didn't want to break it down, and I didn't want to take that feel of of being able to sit down and play it for four or five hours and uh and, and enjoy that but at this point you know i've been speed running this particular game for i don't know i'd say at least a year and uh 
looking back on it, I would say I, it, it's a great decision. Like I, I'm so glad that I learned to speed run this game because I have so much fun speed running this game. And we still sometimes go through and, and do the four, the five hour playthroughs where I don't break the game. And, and it's still just as fun for me, so. But uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, this uh, little tutorial will help you guys uh, get started. And, you know, I'm pretty sure if it does, I'll see you bopping me on the list on speedrun.com because I, <laughs> I don't have a great time in this. You know, I'm not the most efficient. I just know the tricks and stuff. So uh, I'd, I'd be glad, you know, if you got any questions, you can feel free to st uh, stop by the stream. Uh, Twitch.tv slash aphotic underscore Cthulhu. You know, there's a link somewhere in the description below. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm live at nighttime in the a.m. Uh, usually get off around 3 a.m., 4 a.m., something like that, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, and, you know, there's no telling what I'm playing. But even if I'm not playing Symphony of Night, you know, it doesn't matter. Say, hey, I saw you on YouTube. You know, I was wondering if you, you had a moment, or, you know, whatever. I would be glad to explain it to you. I love talking to chat. I love uh, discussing things. So... But yeah, we're going to wrap it up uh, there, and um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be able to do some YouTube content. I haven't been able to do anything with it lately, uh, and it's good to make another video. And it's good to make a video uh, about this game and, and to get some uh, help out there. Because there, like I said, there is a tutorial out there, and it is great. It's what I watched, uh, but it is very, very... You want a piece of me, boy? Very, very in-depth. Um, so, you know, it could be a little overwhelming for somebody that just wants to kind of briefly learn the game and then do their own practice uh, on their own. Uh, so this is like a condensed version of that, that, and it'll help you, you know, hopefully get going and get started. So, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you know, like and subscribe. I'll be making some more content, uh, if, you know, as time permits and as ideas come Come around we're actually doing this live right now on twitch as you just heard thank you for the follow <laughs> um so you know come by and uh, hang out with us we got a pretty good community uh, full of uh you know just viewers and uh gamers and speed runners and streamers so you know hopefully we'll see you out here sometime uh thanks for watching peace